Hello there, welcome back to another Red Talk, and today, uh, before we get into it, just remember, if you like what you hear, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. I will try and do some more videos like this because I really like the concept of this video, but without further ado, let's get into it. So today, we're going to be talking about what is considered to be the ideal Pokemon game. So we're going to use a few, we're going to use uh, a few things to sort of assist us with this. We're going to take the template of what Sword and Shield is, and then we're going to expand upon it and add a few things to it. So what is Sword and Shield? Sword and Shield is the new generation. It's the current generation of Pokemon. It's on a new platform, the Nintendo Switch. It is a lot more powerful than what the 3DS is, meaning that uh, we could have a lot more potential from a Pokemon game because of the, uh, the more powerful hardware. Not only that too, we saw new Pokemon come into the game, as well as a lot of returning Pokemon, a new region, new gym battles, etc, etc. For those of you who have played Pokemon before, this is a fairly safe entry, but we're going to use it, as I said, as a template to try and expand out to think about what would be an ideal Pokemon game. So, with that, the first thing I think we need to make an ideal Pokemon game is why not treat, or why didn't Game Freak treat this new Pokemon, Sword and Shield, with uh, as a very, very, very soft reboot of the series? What does that mean? Well, how about... 150 new Pokemon. No returning Pokemon, as it's a new platform, no returning Pokemon, and just 150 new unique ones. Now, the reason why I suggest this is, for the veterans, it's a fresh take, it's a fresh start. You never feel like you maybe don't like some Pokemon, you're going to fall back to ones that you do like. You have to look for ones that uh, interest you and feel like are a valuable asset to your team. For new players, it doesn't really matter. They've maybe never played a Pokemon game before. This is their first one. They're not going to know the difference. So automatically you have uh, people playing on the same playing field and having to deal with the Pokemon that are presented to them, not ones that are brought back to keep fans happy. I think if Game Freak really presented that as the case, that they were going to do 150 new Pokemon and there were going to be no returning ones at launch, that could be a very unique way to sell the product and allow people to sort of sit there and go, well, I'm on a fresh page now. I'm not bringing everything that I've had before with me. So that's step number one. I think the other thing that, or another thing that we could look at is how we implement the wild area on a grander scale. So let's have a look at a game like uh, Breath of the Wild or the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Those games gave you a lot of freedom and in a lot of ways, you could tackle things how you wanted. Now, let's incorporate that into Pokemon. I think it would be a really good idea is if Game Freak could figure out a way to do dynamic leveling. So what's dynamic leveling from, from my perspective? Well, it allows you to tackle the gyms in any order. If the game was truly open world rather than segmented open world with just one open area like the wild area, it would allow trainers and players to run around capture the pokemon they want explore the area explore the zone or the region whatever you wish to call it and then go about battling gyms as they see fit and i think that will give a great sense of freedom it will allow people to feel like you go okay this gym might be a little bit more easier for my team at the moment let's tackle that way or maybe this is the first gym i've encountered let's go and have a look and see what we can find i think if you increase the area of the what like of pokemon and made it quite a large region for people to explore people would just run out in all different directions i think with a pokemon game sort of like a legend of zelda game you don't want to feel like you're attached to a rope and you're walking along the rope you you want to be let free you want to be unleashed into the world and just explore it at your own time at your own pace and i think pokemon could really benefit from that because not only are people allowed to explore at their own pace and just do what they want at the end that gives their journey more meaning when you're tied to the rope you're not really going on an adventure you're taking a tour of what the developer has designed for you and i think with breath of the wild as the example that was really refreshing to know that you weren't really being guided anywhere you weren't really being told too much as to where to go you were given suggestions but you never said that it never really said that you had to go there immediately it was more you need to go 
uh, to this point here. But first, I'm going to visit A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, and then eventually I'll get there. And depending on like that route that you took to get there, A, B, C, D, E, and F might have, you know, 1A, 2A, 3A, and so on and so forth. So before you know it, A to F becomes like, I don't know, A to K, A to N, and you've just explored all these other different areas before you even sit there and realize, man, I was actually supposed to go there. And I think Pokemon could benefit from that extremely, extremely well. Uh, a sense of freedom is something that Pokemon, I feel, could really, really, really take advantage of and it's not only a benefit for the developers having to develop a, a large world and fill it which i feel would be a lot easier than trying to design paths to get people there like to different areas at certain times but it, it gives an extra level of creativity not only for the developers being able to open up their landscape and go, okay, this is what we're going to design and this is how it's going to look. But for the player going, hey, I don't want to go that way. My friend's gone that way and they told me a little bit about that. I don't really care about it. I want to go this way and I want to see what's there. Not only that, but with a larger landscape allows for more smaller biomes to be within it. So you could have like, again, from Breath of the Wild you could have like mountainous areas with volcanoes. You could have uh, snow-capped mountains. You could have ravines, jungles, forests, caves, ocean, like an ocean area or a large lake or something, river systems, as well as towns. Like Pokemon could really open up to be a true, even if it's not on the same scale as Breath of the Wild, but a, a mini open world, which would allow people to travel as they wish. I think that coupled with 150 new Pokemon that you've never seen before would just make the experience so much more, I suppose, next generation. You would you would have something that you had never seen before, not only from a Pokemon perspective, but from a game and world perspective as well. I think when they go hand in hand, that really creates the need to break away from the, the normal, you know, and people will sit there and go wow, this is something I've never seen before. Even as a veteran player, you will sit there and go, despite the fact that it's an open world, I've never had the freedom to go where I want. I've always been taken on the tour. I've never actually been able to create my own destination. So for that reason, I feel like this is another perfect change that could see the next Pokemon game be a real step in the right direction. The third thing. I personally like gym battles. I'm pretty sure a lot of people like gym battles. They've been around for so long, so they must be doing some things right. But why not change the dynamic of how you do that that gym battle? So if you have a look, let's draw inspiration from the animated series of Pokemon. A lot of the times, they may uh, Ash seems to meet the gym leader before he battles the gym leader. Let's look uh, specifically at the original series. Ash meets Brock's father and then is taken to Brock and gets to meet Brock for like a split second before he goes and does the gym battle. It's the same thing with Misty. He's been walking with Misty for how many episodes before he actually figures out that she's the gym leader of Cerulean City. So why not create a way to tell a short story and where the player might meet the gym leader and have a short story with them and then introduce them as more of a more of a believable character rather than someone that we just interpret to stand in their gym all day every day until you come and see them and i'm not saying that you should do that for for every gym leader why not just make it where occasionally you might meet them and they're, they've got a bit of trouble or maybe you might be able to see a cutscene of them battling you know and and create this like living breathing atmosphere this world where you can see them and you know who they are. You might not have never met them before because this is a new region. This is a new area. So you're not familiar with these characters, but you automatically have a sense that they may be someone that you're going to meet further down the line. I think coupled with that, you'd be in for a very interesting experience. And knowing that they could be anywhere and you can complete the gyms in any order that would extend that need to go out and explore and to try and locate them. Perhaps you do turn up to a, a gym and the gym leader is there. Perhaps you turn up and the gym leader is not. It's very hard to say. Maybe you can incorporate like day and night cycles into the game. So if you go there 
say during the day, maybe they're out doing something and you need to find them and bring them back. Maybe if it's nighttime, they're at home and you can't fight them directly or straight away. They may be walking somewhere and you can challenge them at night. Who knows? But I think incorporating that as well into it, like adding that extra layer into the the process as to getting to the gym battle would be very interesting. We did see some of the mini games for Sword and Shield, and they were quite interesting. Some of them, there were others that were quite uninspired. I think if they can like make a balance where it might be a little a task that you need to do, or maybe you need to do a subsequent short side quest or something to get them to go back to the gym, or even if you walk in and yes, there are just gym trainers there. I think if you change up the dynamics of the gym battling system and the process to getting to that gym battling system, that would just add another extra layer where people feel more engaged rather than just going to the building and going, all right, time to walk into here and beat the gym and and, and then walk out. You know, that's it's kind of gotten a little bit stale. And it's not to say that it's not like it's out of date and all that sort of stuff. It's more to say that I think they could extend upon it and make it more engaging for us as players. And not only that too, again, that comes back to the creativity side of it. I think with Pokemon now as we know it, the reason why some people feel it's quite stale is because it's never really broken its mold. And it there's so many ways I feel that it could. As, us, as we've heard now just in the, in the last sort of 10 or so minutes since I've started this video, there's two ways that I've we've already explained, and this is the third one, you know, and the more we sort of explore it, the more it opens up. So just keep that in mind. Like the more that you can expand the idea out and flesh out things that uh, like flesh out things in a way that doesn't feel too grindy will make things a lot more enjoyable in the long run, I feel. So with that, let's move on to number four. Methods to leveling up. Now, we all know that Game Freak has made it a lot easier to level up Pokemon. We all know that things like the EXP share have made things a lot easier. I'm not saying that you should remove the EXP share, but I feel like you need to either create a barrier to entry where players need to do something to earn the right to have EXP share, or you need to have the ability to turn it on and off because there are Pokemon purists out there who have played since the original game who perhaps don't like the EXP share as much. I, for one, am not really a fan of it. I tolerate it. It's not the worst thing that Pokemon's ever done, but it's for those who are more interested in training each individual Pokemon and feeling like they really have to work to get there, I think that in the long run, should be made either, as I said, a barrier to entry where you must complete a certain objective tasks or whatever, or it's optional where you can turn it on and off. So that one's a fairly short one, but I think it is relevant as well. So just keep that in mind. So number five, and number five, I feel is going to be a bit of a, a controversial sort of topic and all that sort of stuff, but we're going to, we're going to dive into it. Expansion pass. So as we know, the last couple or the last month or so we've we've seen the expansion pass for sword and shield come out and it's been a little bit mixed i for one was fairly mixed on it because i wasn't a big fan of the wild area and its execution however why not do something a little bit more than just give us more open area how about we turn pokemon into and here comes the bit where it's going to really upset people a semi live service game. Now, what does that mean? Why do I say semi, not full live service game? Well, your expansion passes are not more content into the current game, not in the sense of being in the same region. Why not release an expansion pass that allows players to go back to other regions in, regions in the game and access that region's Pokemon? Now, this will be a little bit tricky because obviously in previous generations of Pokemon games, the new Pokemon have always been accounted for with old Pokemon. Yes, I understand that. So what do we do? Or how do you tackle that? Well, I think what needs to happen is either they need to flesh out where Pokemon are spread about more diversely so you get a good mixture of Pokemon, but the open-worldness of 
this this concept would make it that even though there may be significantly less new Pokemon to pick from, there would still be enough to create things that are a lot more interesting or maybe a little bit more fleshed out. So as an example, you might find a pre, like the first evolution, the first stage of a Pokemon fairly early on in the game and then find its second evolution and third evolution later on in the game. So you do have that natural sense of progression. And not only that too, it shows you that you are getting further through the game. Now, the reason why I say semi live service is obviously you're going to need to pay for the expansion, but the expansion entails a whole new region or a, re a returning region like Kanto or something like that. All of the gym battles, again, with that dynamic feeling of it, you know, having to go through a, a process to get to the gym leader, you know, having to solve a problem, not just simply walking through the door. If you do that, you've already created an extra level on old content. So people who have played that content before don't necessarily feel like they're getting burnt because they, they're they experiencing something new, a new, I suppose, way of looking at the game rather than just going, I've been here 10, 20 times before. If you're like me, who's played red, uh, sorry, blue version, like, I don't know, 15, 20 times all the way through. So it gives me as a player, a chance to be able to sit there and go, I've never seen this before, even though I've already been here before, everything is familiar, but this is a new look at it. If you do that and then also incorporate the, the Elite Four or the League Challenge, that could be something really interesting. So you've completed the League in Sword and Shield, and then you're somehow transported over to Kanto, as an example. You get a ticket, you get like a... a, a a free flight over there, a boat ride over there, who knows, whatever it may be. But then you're given an option. Do you wish to play the game on hard or do you wish to play it on hard mode, which would incorporate the fact that you're going to use your Pokemon that you already have? Or would you like to play it as it's intended? And that would see you remove your high level Pokemon from your party and give you one of the fresh starters. The hard mode will still give you a fresh starter at level five, but everything else will be a lot harder. So you would bring in a level five Pokemon and into your team and train it up that way. So automatically, and even if that that seems a little bit ridiculous, maybe it's just the fact that you lose all the Pokemon from the Galar region or the new region until you beat the base game or the Kanto version of the game. So automatically now you're getting two games that run off the same game and if it's an expansion pass they would need to make it cheaper than cheaper than sixty dollars they need to uh prove that it's worthwhile purchasing this expansion pass and i know that's going to sound insane especially for game creep game game creep game freak but at the same time too that would incentivize people to go back and play old content and it would also give people the the trust in the company to go hey these guys are really bringing out something that I want to play and it's affordable. Now, this is where the semi-live service comes into it. I feel like they would have to have some microtransactions to make the game viable. And, you know, it could just be something as simple as outfits. We're seeing outfits in Sword and Shield. People love them. They are able to customize their character and all that sort of stuff. Maybe you can have some outfits for your Pokemon. Something simple like that. It's not pay to win. It is simply cosmetic. I know that's a trigger. I know people don't really like it, but it is what it is. You don't have to engage in it, okay? I, I hate the fact that people sit there and go, I'm so triggered by it, but and then purchase it anyway. If you're not happy with a microtransaction, don't pay for it. it that, that's the way it's always going to be. So to be able to have that, that would also like make the gameplay longer because now you're getting a... 10, 15, 16 hour expansion rather than just a small tour on another small island that may only last you four or five hours. The one thing that I really like is if you look at games like World of Warcraft, the expansion is the whole reason that the game keeps getting uh, or keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger for one, but it also seems to bring people back in every single time because everyone's going, well, what's the new content like? And people will burn through like the story content fairly quickly, but then there's the end game. And if the end game is good, people will stay engaged. So if you beat the Elite Four or the, the League in 
Sword and Shield, you then go through, play through Kanto, beat the Elite Four, and to top it off, maybe there's an event that happens between the two regions that eats up another five to ten hours. You need to do a certain thing. You need to collect items to be able to come back and challenge an even stronger trainer. So that could really make the game like open up even more. It shows the the ability to work with the other regions and bring them in. And of course, if you decide that maybe you want to hold off, say, the Hoenn region, uh, sorry, the Johto region with gold and silver, then you release a new Pokemon game that attaches onto this base Pokemon game. You know, it, obviously you can't call it Sword and Shield. You just maybe just call it Pokemon. That's it. Or Pokemon World. I don't know, as an example. So then if, if you feel like everyone enjoyed the Kanto region and you feel like maybe it's too soon to release Johto and the gold and silver Pokemon, release a brand new area with brand new Pokemon. That way, again, like the new Pokemon players who have never played a Pokemon game before feel like they're getting just more content and they're happy. But the old veteran players who have played it either, again, since the original or for quite some time, maybe like since third generation, don't feel like they're getting burnt having to continually purchase new content. If it's brand new content to both respects, maybe then you could charge $60 and go, hey, this is brand new content. We want you to pay up. I don't think people would feel genuinely that annoyed because it's something that I've never seen before. And especially given the circumstance that people tend to pay for that third generation or the third installment to a game like your crystals your yellows and all that sort of stuff to be able to sit there and go this is brand new content yes i have to pay that american 60 dollars for it or the 80 90 dollars here in australia i don't think people will be upset they'd be very happy because they just know that they're getting new content and not only that too it attaches to their old game where they don't have to sit there and go man i've got to start a brand new game from scratch yes okay yes i do have to start with a new team and work my way through it but I don't have to worry about trading Pokemon up. I don't have to worry about uh, like a Pokemon home. I can just like, as soon as that new content comes out, I can open it up. I can transfer, mix and match all my old Pokemon from the, the base game, the Kanto region, and then this new region. And that allows not only for Game Freak to continue working on the old generations, bringing them up to speed and making sure all those Pokemon can be implemented in the game, but it also allows them time to work on new Pokemon and new areas at the same time because they do have that backlog of old content. Look at Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. A lot of people thought that game would be not very good at all, but it actually sold quite well and the, the response and the reaction to it was quite positive. A lot of people liked the simplicity of it, even though it was a game that had played, again, if you're like me, you know what the story is, you know where to go, you know the gameplay, you don't need to be told what to do, you know what's happening. But it was refreshing and enjoyable because it was just a new take on it. And I think Pokemon could really benefit from that as well. There's other little things that you could add into it that would just make it feel more like an open world. So, you know, dynamic weather, day and night cycles, events. One thing I feel like uh, the current game sort of misses is a reason to stay in towns. And I feel like that's not just with Sword and Shield. That's sort of been all the way through. I think the one thing, one version that I really liked... Uh, having to travel to towns was was with Ruby and Sapphire and the Pokemon contests. I think if you're going to make it a semi live service game, you need to keep people engaged entirely at all, like almost year round. And you do that with either really good mini games or really good events. So I think if you had a, a mixture of Pokemon contests, uh, maybe tournaments where trainers can come together and battle for prizes or just prize money, which can be used in the game. Uh, how about this for a wild idea? Incorporating the Pokemon trading card game into it or a version of Pokemon trading card game into it where people can actually build decks and play the game that way. You know, you could purchase decks with in-game currency or perhaps you could purchase random decks with microtransactions. I don't know. I don't really like the microtransactions idea, but I feel like they would incorporate something like that because it is a random factor and all that sort of stuff. But 
it's something that draws people in. So people who don't want to play Pokemon for leveling up their own creatures may enjoy more so running around to each town doing Pokemon card battles instead. Why not just go the whole hog? I know there's an online Pokemon card trading game, but we haven't had a console dedicated trading card game since the original one. And that was on the Game Boy Color. Why not bring it back? You have it there. You will you will keep people engaged in your online game regardless because there's people that won't want to play the actual Pokemon game and just play the card game. Or if they're that much of a fan, they will play it on both on both. So when it's off season in the in the Pokemon game and they can't get into the tournament, they'll go back to the online Pokemon trading card game and play it that way where they can engage in that. I think you could do a lot. And then not only that too, if you add those those mini games, something to keep people busy all year round, there's people who play MMOs and other games purely for their side and mini games because they're so good. Look at Gwent. Gwent stemmed an entire game because it was so good in Witcher 3. I don't know. But to me, I feel like Pokemon could really, really, really like expand upon what it already has and turn it into a beast and i'm not just talking like you know like something that's huge and powerful i'm talking like a gargantuan unstoppable unrelenting force that would not only entice players back in but keep them there pokemon has the the well it's already got the assets to not maybe not turn it into an mmo as such where it's grindy and all that sort of thing but turn it into that semi live service game where it can be played solely on on your own or you can join a lobby and play with like 20 to 30 other players that i feel would be amazing so with that we're looking at to start off with 150 new pokemon that we've never seen before the ability to live and run around in an open world and tackle gyms in any order we see fit with dynamic leveling. To have to perhaps do something to engage that gym leader, to draw them back to the gym. With the expansion pass, we also have new areas and old returning areas coming back in to extend out the game and make it even larger. Remember, like a year's time, for example, or three or four years into this game, you've got three or four expansions that have come out and you release a semi-ultimate edition. People would eat that up. They know that they're getting a base game and two other expansions with it. People would love it. You know, coupled with the fact that you could have things like dynamic weather and day and night cycles and mini games that are actually mini games that people can lose their time into rather than actually playing and finish the game. Like, there could be people who have in, find the Pokemon ga- card game in the game and, and love it so much that they've played the game for, like, 100 hours and still haven't beaten all the gyms. That's what I'm talking about. Give people a reason to enjoy the game and give people a reason to, to come into it. So, with that, I feel that would be my ideal Pokemon game. Something that I could play long-term rather than always having to start fresh and have to transport everything up. Why not turn it into that semi-live service game and make it something unique? Make it a beast. Make it a semi-MMO game as well where people can come in and just progress through the game. And even new players get a chance to play around with other new players. There's no sort of big, like, nasty level 100 team that can run around and one-shot them. Because Pokemon is not a PvP game in that respect where you can just challenge anyone at any one time. You have to agree. Keep it simple. With that, please, if you like this video and you've made it this far, give this video a like. Share it out with your friends. Let's see if we can get 100 views on this video. Share it out. Let people discuss it. I want to see some comments down below because this is the game that we love and we've loved it for so long, but we want to see it change. We, We need to see something that would make it feel like it's a game that's from 2020. Not just a game from maybe all the way back when Pokemon Red were out, I think in 97, and just being brought forward. Make it into something special. Make us sit there and go, wow, I've never seen this before. And I think, Game Freak, you would have an absolutely unstoppable machine, more so than you have already now. Like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for more. And with that, my name is Red. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. I'm out.